Parental discretion is advised. Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. Enjoying this wonderful pizza from Slice on Broadway, the people in Pittsburgh that provide good pizza to podcasters. Want to have your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line, advertising. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the Wrestling Mayhem Show. The Mayhem Mirth Mobile is rolling down the train. I'm uh, Sorgatron, at Sorgatron on the Twitter. Live from the studio, Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Home of the Bruno San Martino, the Kurt Angles, Watch the Streets, and uh, Corey Graves, who's doing some cool stuff up there on NXT, uh, the announced team. With me is this uh, wonderful... Uh, rogues gallery of mayhemers first of all from san antonio texas he's a commentator down with inspire pro wrestling down in san antonio i already said that part he's aiming yes Newton. san antonio the home of that one old wrestler that has that wonky eye now so yeah <laughs> <laughs> Sean um, Michaels? We, don't have the, we don't have the uh the repertoire not the repertoire the uh the the list of of, of names that pittsburgh does Are you, no so san antonio has a ton of wrestlers down there right well, not specifically San Antonio. We just can't find Shawn Michaels because he's covered in camouflage. That's right. <laughs> no one can find him. It's covered uh, in camouflage in the desert. Yes. Thank you for having me on. <laughs> he's always uh, going in that one direction that he's always looking. All right. I just, also I just look for fallen people named Stan. <laughs> also joining us from Poughkeepsie, New York, where I'm unaware of any uh, significant wrestlers who came from there. But we have Mad Mike. Excuse me, sir. Poughkeepsie, New York, was where Piper's Pit originated. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. I. I. I, yeah. I I'm sorry. I. I. What? I know that a lot has happened there, but I. We. You. You sir, don't have a Dominic Crush Danucci. attacked the Macho Man here. Crush turned his back on his friend, the Macho Man, in Poughkeepsie. I saw it. Oh, that's when he bit his tongue. I cried. I Lacerated cried. his tongue. Oh man. Um anyways, uh and also joining us from Johnstown PA where they forgot to bring the ring to a WWE show. It's Bobby F. Uh, they did. Um <laughs> actually from Wimber PA, the home of Manchild. Top that everybody. Manchild. There you go. There you go. Wait, have we been oh, saying it wrong Manchild. all these years? But this is a wrestling mayhem show. Enough about us. Thank you. I'm just glad the intro didn't include a talk about penis suits or anything like that for a change. <laughs> now it does. <laughs> are, no, are sorry, we can't talk about that because penguins don't have penises. Our two-week streak of talking about penis suits. Nobody <laughs> understands that, and they don't understand that this is a wrestling show just yet. Um, but this is WrestlingMayhemShow.com, where you can find a lot of uh, this and all kinds of other shows. 30 Days of WrestleMania wrap-ups for so many shows. Total Divas Raw, The Midweek War. Um, um, uh, well, so Mayhem Minute is the daily show we have going on. Dun, 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 dun. I'm sorry, the theme popped in my head from last night. Um, <laughs> you can also <laughs> drop us a line, uh, 412-206-WMS0, or uh, the email address at... Good times. Good times. Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Uh, or you can uh, also find us at Mayhem Show on Twitter, Wrestling Mayhem Show on Facebook, the Facebook group where a lot of conversation is happening, and Google+. And please subscribe to us. Oh, the link, link's over on WrestlingMayhemShow.com for iTunes, YouTube, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, and the like for many, many, many of our shows and growing every day. You can join us in the chat room. There it is! right there over at live.wrestlingmayhemshow.com we got a new chat room we're kind of playing with this see if this one works for us this week since we had to kind of rebuild i don't even know what they're talking about there we got all these polls going on right now like uh john stewart hot or not seven of you in the chat room say no two of you say hot swipe right swipe right for john stewart there you go um so much happening and they like to send gifts on the chat room too throughout the show to distract me Thank you, our Patreon <laughs> supporters. Uh, you guys just got a state of the mayhem for March. Uh, so, and included in that, of course, Buddy Landell, our friends from the, the, the Wrestling Revolution .com, and of course, Bo Diggity. Woo! You can join us as well, Patreon.com/slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. If you enjoy the conversation, get some value out of the show. 
Please donate even a little bit helps. We'd love to do that so we don't have to do advertisers, except for the one that pays us in pizza. We do like to have that uh, going on here. Um, so let's get into the show. Uh, first topic of the week is, of course, John Stewart. Great guest star yeah. for Raw or greatest guest star for Raw? Greatest. Your thoughts, Mad Mike. I'm going to say one of the greatest. Okay. One of the greatest. Bob Barker's still very high up for me. <laughs> yes. Yes. Bob Barker is still really high up there, if not for his interaction so, with so, Dork. Um, well, that's not like There he is. So when you go with Bob Barker, obviously we did the we need to riff on the thing that he does. We had a version of The Price is Right on Raw with the wrestlers with the funny name tags, even though they weren't wearing shirts. How did they put them on? I don't know. Sorry, Chris Jericho. Your peck has a hole in it. I don't know. But anyways, but I think as far as that goes, this was the best representation of the thing the person does outside of that appearance. Well, it also helps that Jon Stewart is an actual wrestling fan. Oh, yeah. I think I think that's what made the appearance of good more than anything, more than like the, the actual like, segment or anything was just you could tell that he, not only did he like wrestling, but he watched it. Mm -hmm. He understood it. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, he, you know, had an understanding of the integral storylines that were going on with Seth Rollins, and then, and that came across, and he cut probably one of the better promos of anybody, like, in the past year. He brought something up that happened, what, eight months ago? Yeah. Yeah. Which, which you... That he was at, personally. Like, he was yeah. at Money in the Bank. Like, I think that's why Mike Tyson works, too. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Because Mike Tyson is a fan of wrestling, and you can tell just by the way he interacts with people. Right. Just don't let him talk on the mic. Uh, you know who they should get on Raw now? Melissa Joan Hart. Oh, absolutely. Wait, what do you should, actually... we can do? Melissa explains the Raw. But and, but that's the thing. I think there is an appeal to getting people that are actually like, clearly fans of WWE on the show. It, it adds an appeal other than just a celebrity. And I think it adds a lasting appeal. I mean, I don't know if anybody, you know, when... I don't know, like Kathy and Hoda, you know, from the <laughs> station. I don't think that know. any of their audience cross with WWE's no. audience. You know, very interesting. Sure, so, so, I'm sure that was the case with the Daily so Show. I watched um, WrestleMania 7 today, uh, most of WrestleMania 7 today, and they had a section. There, They had their celebrity panel. They had, uh, I think, Marla Maples, uh, Regis, and Alex Trebek. And there was a port, and they kept and they kept putting them in situations it, like these bad interview situations in the back where they yeah. like it was a practical joke or something but it really worked regis is always really great with anything that he does to be honest and he i think he's i don't know if he's a wrestling fan but he's a fan of what wrestling is and kind of understands it to a certain I point think he is a fan of wrestling because then he have um, somebody on, his, on their show he's always and, having like, somebody he got on his slammed show. and got hurt or something <laughs> yeah, i'm not surprised <laughs> yeah oh no yeah he did something like do a wrestling move on on me yeah. and they're like and i think it was a little too close to the kayfabe area and they kind of had to hurt him <laughs> bloody him. I yeah. can't remember who it was. That's also like why people like I think like Seth Green are really good when mm -hmm. they're guest hosting is because you can tell that they actually Hugh watch Jackman. the show. Hugh Jackman for sure. For Hugh sure. Jackman's another one. Yeah. But, I mean, but there's also some people that that they bring on and they're not good. Like maybe they're an actor or something, but they don't know what to do in that setting because it's a whole Jeremy different. Jeremy Piven. Jeremy Piven. Yeah, he was a little awkward, Jeremy wasn't he? Jeremy Piven. I like Jeremy Piven a whole lot, but he did not know what to do. It's on different, Raw. especially someone like that. Like you take a Hugh Jackman, um, and you know, it was some conversation I actually had on uh, the newly renamed Basic Sorgonomics show at Sorgatron.com was about pro wrestling. I talk about our friends at Headlocked and, and kind of that aspect of a, the theater people versus pro wrestlers. Um, and I think big Tony award winning Hugh Jackman, you know, he's more than just Wolverine. He's a stage guy, right? He's very mm -hmm. passionately a stage guy, uh, Broadway, whatever. Uh, I, I don't think that that's too much to walk out there in front of 15,000 people, you know, in a live situation on TV and do what he did. And also I think that the whole like getting actors again, even like in the case of John Stewart, getting comedians who understand not just stage presence, but how to deliver lines and, and, right. And and be witty and be you know you know right right giving giving those giving those speaking roles. We say all the a lot of people say all the time that you know what would it be like if you know they took wrestlers and actually took gave them acting classes and 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 how that would aid in their work. 
I, I think that's just sort of one of those cases where that taking the what they know from that room and bringing it to pro wrestling fits perfectly. Right. Exactly. Um, Great. Not not all comedians are hits though, because yeah. we did have Dennis Miller and Larry the Cable Guy. Uh, my guy, well, my not guy, exactly the my, best. Example. I did say comedians. Uh, well, Larry, <laughs> and Larry the Cable Guy is a different, like he's a different brand of comedian. And I think for what he did, like he went all in for it. I think there were just bad ideas, and I can't. Really I don't know. Ideas. I don't know if we well, can I mean, really. He does stand up. He does. Oh, yeah. uh, of course, he does. But but people know him as this bumbling character from the movies and stuff more and it's like how Larry Cable Guy going to come out and do what Jon Stewart did right Jon Stewart's a comedian mm-hmm. but he's also a social commentator social and- commentator you're right and and he was able to do that that was the greatest thing and I think you guys were talking about this on Raw Wrap Up how it, it was like he came out and when one of those interviews when he's going to get the guy Mm-hmm. You know, that's definitely yeah. opposed to him. Like that's yeah, Riz, the style. Riz was that, up last night. that that it was, it was a great point. It, that was the style because you felt like he was getting a Bill O'Reilly. He was getting that senator. He was getting whoever. You guys even mentioned Bill O'Reilly on the show. Um, like that. And, that's what made it special, and it made it feel real. You know, I'm talking about the mayhem minute this morning about how Twitter is making us wonder if this stuff is real or not anymore. And um, and and I think that tricks you for a minute when you get somebody like John Stewart doing what he did last night. And even and, like the and, back. Or go ahead, Mike. Oh no, I was gonna say, and then plus I've been to a taping of the Daily Show. Yeah, it's one take. Yeah, like they don't retake anything, so it's essentially performing for a live crowd. Every right. night for the past 16, 17 years, however long he's been doing it. And if right. you're, and if you're like, a comedian, they don't reshoot anything. And if you're a comedian, I'll go you aim in here in a sec. If you're a comedian, um, you know how to fly without a net and have probably had some bad nights at it too, uh, to get to wherever you were of any significance, mm-hmm. like a John Stewart, even a Larry Cable guy, to be honest. Um, you got a bomb to be good. What? Mm-hmm. You got a bomb to be good. You got a bomb to be good. And actually, wrestlers <laughs> can learn from that too. Uh, Eamon, I'm sorry. Oh, no. I was I was also going to mention that I also really love like, the backstage, like, part he did with Renee at the end because it just seemed <laughs> so natural. Like it was it was it didn't come off as like him like reading off lines and no, that makes sense. No. Like, like it was very much like and I think that's one of the things that's one of the biggest killers sometimes is is sometimes stuff, especially in WWE, comes off as so scripted. What well, you could tell he was interrupting it. What do you say about the hallways unprotected? Yeah, unprotected. I'm just gonna say that hallway thing. <laughs> the big unprotected hallway. Yeah. It was good. Which good like, I, I kept like, what is this supposed to be protected with? <laughs> like, are we? Do we have security? You know, is there a good version of J and J security at that point? I, I'm not sure. Or is Sandra the the seamstress or whatever? <laughs> is that any <laughs> that that they need? I love that we <laughs> all have to a be relationship. Fair, I wouldn't fuck with Sandra the seamstress. That's true. Yeah, she, she not for much. a second. She is the real, <laughs> as they would say. Anyways. <laughs> Anyways, um, on that note, uh, let us know what you think of John Stewart. Other guests, we got Wiz Khalifa coming up here in Pittsburgh. I'll be there. Um, so once again, guys, if you cover the raw wrap up, sorry about that. Um, oh, yes, yes. <laughs> so we'll do your job for you again. I should have never let Cena spit with Wiz Khalifa. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> so why shouldn't you do the wrap up live from? Console Arena. Because uh, w- one, no cameras, and two, I'll be watching the dark match. And uh, three, oh, I'm yeah, going to be point. walking around. I'm sure my phone will be dead by then, but um, I don't know. Maybe, maybe we can do something. Maybe like walking back to the train or whatever uh, I decide to do next Monday. Uh, maybe I can join you guys. We'll, we'll figure something out. But I can't initiate it, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Speaking of initiations, why don't you initiate your collection, your closet with some uh, pro wrestling tees, guys? Go to pro wrestling tees. a lot of t-shirts. Yeah. Bobby, you have a lot of t-shirts, but do you have the coolest shirts of them all? I do. I have one of them. You have one of them? What do you have? I them? have Share the Alexander Cars designed Good Times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com That's shirt. That's right. Style of the Fast Times at Ridgemont High. Mm-hmm. Uh, the great stuff uh, going on over there. Uh, ProWrestlingTees.com slash WMS. They're supporting podcasts like us by letting us have a t-shirt shop up there. Uh, promoters, uh, you know, promotions, independent promotions, independent wrestlers. Uh, Gold still has a shop up there. So many bigger stars like CM Punk getting their 
their bit over there. Hey, you can't find CM Punk merch on WWEshop.com anymore. That's for certain. Even if from the link from his alumni page, actually, which is strange. Uh, Chris Jericho <laughs> just got a shirt shop. Chris too. Jericho just got got one up there. Uh, a lot of stuff for talk is Jericho going on. He's got a DVD. He's got a road to road on the road with Jericho DVD that came out, which I wonder is that house show stuff that he did, did if they did a DVD for that. I'm, I'm curious to see what that's about. Um, but you can go on there. They got a lot of great stuff. You can support friends of the show like Greg Iron, like DJ Z, or you can burr, 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 burr. Thank, burr, burr. You, thank you or Coca Cabana or, or, or anything like that. Or uh, let's see what we got here. Who is a friend of the show here that we've talked to Chris Jericho, Christopher Daniels. We just posted uh, the uh, Chikara, uh, King of Trios. When we talked, we talked with Chris Daniels, um, uh, Christopher Daniels, mm-hmm. a, a, a bit ago, and he's got he some stuff on comic here. Book, What's that? He was just on comic book, man. He was just on comic book. But he's got a lot of comic book stuff going on, actually. He's mm-hmm. got. Oh, this is for you, Mike. We got some um, Christopher Daniels Angel of Shield going on here. A lot of fun oh, I stuff. Want that shirt. <laughs> <laughs> you know you want it pro wrestling tees.com slash wms start there throw one of ours in there support this show and then support somebody like awesome like christopher daniels there uh with stuff like that uh so let's go into topic two of the day the intercontinental title or as i like to call it, intercontinental hot potato the 24 7 role is still in effect somebody one of you guys pointed out i think it was in the facebook group right that's the Intercontinental Championship was merged when they were combining titles uh, after the WCW experiment uh, with the Hardcore Championship. And apparently somebody mm-hmm. remembered that. And apparently in some effect, the 24-7 rule of the belt being passed around has has happened. Technically, that's that's not accurate, though. Was it merged with the European? Not t- well, no, technically. No, no, no. What? Basically, uh, Crash Holly was the one who initiated the 24-7 rule also took it away so the 24 7 rule was officially done with before the titles were merged together mike mm. mike are you I'm just, seriously going to technicality me away from this my dream of the hardcore <laughs> championship 24 7 rule which is one of my favorite gimmicks in professional mm-hmm. wrestling made best re-famous by one chuck taylor who did a 24 7 rule instagram video series on i don't even know what they that call was it. Oh, I love that was that was amazing it was, it was great it was great i'll probably take you a whole half an hour to watch all the videos probably because it's instagram yep um 15 seconds at a time um <laughs> but still it's amazing and and um i don't know if you want to say it's giving the intercontinental title importance again it's them doing something different, though. But it's it, well, I mean, it, it's making it important in the fact that everybody wants it, even if they don't want to pin somebody yes. for it. Um, it. It's making it impo- It's making it some notice. Hey, look, there's the intercontinental title. I, I think. I'll tell you, uh, uh, oh, go ahead. Uh, wheels, well, wheels. I think it's just okay. from a fact that for the past what four years, like the only intercontinental title story is the champion loses a bunch. And then retains on pay-per-views, except for mm-hmm. sometimes. Yeah. Like, that's the only story they ever do. Yeah. So this is a breath of fresh air from the fact that it is so different. They well, made... Yeah. Oh, sorry, Bobby. Go ahead. I was going to say, they made me love our truth again. There's that, too. I thought that I was, was something gonna that was never going to happen. He's yeah. been, been in, irrelevant for, like, the last couple months. And then all of a sudden, he's scared of spiders again. And Oh, he's over that. Now he's still afraid of heights. It's awesome. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I've enjoyed oh. Raw immensely with our truth at commentary. I take King the Intercontinental title. Last night was the greatest of just him holding it and you seeing Luke Harper just come up behind him. And he's like, he's behind me, isn't he? <laughs> yeah. Here. <laughs> he just but walks away. And, 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 and that's the part that doesn't really like bring legitimacy to the belt because he, it, it, yes, everyone wants it, but also R2 is just willing to give it away. <laughs> Which is kind of a <laughs> like, fun joke with it, though, too. I mean, they're, they're having fun. This is fun. It's it, awesome. It is very fun. I mean, and, and I am enjoying it. They've done uh, worse things with that belt, let's be honest. Oh, no, they have. <laughs> it's also a heck of a lot better than random guy going, oh, I want to bring legitimacy back to the Intercontinental title. 
for the 18,000th time. Basically, I love that basically this this alleged uh, Intercontinental title match for – well, I guess it's not really alleged. It's happened. No, it's announced. It's, it's announced. happening. They're just, just announcing more names. Uh, it basically features everybody that – when they won the Intercontinental title, people were like, that person's going to bring legitimacy to it, and they never did. Well, I, I think like it's that. just everyone they don't want in the Battle Royal. Well, that's true, but I but I like that theory as well. Like, I I want just, like, Biggie Langston to be in the in the match now randomly because he was another one of those guys that was like, he's going to bring legitimacy to it. Yeah. Where's your Curtis Axel? Curtis Axel can be in that thing. Oh, jeez, Axel. Oh, man, yeah. There's so Remember much... When, I, 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 the more, the, I know you guys talk about raw wrap up, but uh, you know, kind of a side step from our general t- topic here was last night not the best episode of raw we've watched in several months. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Like, um, like almost everything. top to bottom. There was another episode of raw that was really good. I think it was the one after the snowed in show. Okay, right. That we right. Said, the one, the one was Sting and all that stuff. And, yeah, yeah, but there, I think this one was better. I think I because I really besides this thing stuff I don't remember anything. a lot happened, happened. and I know they can't keep the momentum but it's very special when we do see this every once in a while right mm-hmm. yeah it was a well put together raw I think uh, for the most part um, I, I I I like that they're doing new things and they're not just doing the same stuff over and over and over and beating it into the ground every week mm-hmm. I like that mm-hmm. I, I like that Miz that, and Miz now are doing different things yeah that, you that's know. definitely thing was great too yeah it was so unexpected too it yeah was... yeah it was, with john cena again you got a little bit of that is this a john cena heel turn you know i mean there was a it, lot going happened. on there it happened like yeah. i feel like it's happened but it's not like definitive you know it's not mm-hmm. like it's not like this is the part where he turns heel but so like, he's a heel. yeah um he was, a, he was a heel when he started running down at xt and being like these guys want to come up and take my spot right like, right I, right I, I think i like Stephanie's not wrong. Like she's she's not no. really saying anything too terrible. No, and that's she's a point. Saying that... you're you're over entitled and you think that the WWE will die without you, die without you, just like everyone else who was big in WWE thought. Right, right, and which is a which is something that they actually like. That's a talking point that's in a lot of documentaries too. Mm-hmm. they're just yeah. like no we're gonna keep going it's not about individuals you know and it's very like a lot of that a lot of the um authority kind of you know propaganda that they use in promos is actually kind of the company line mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. And, and plus a lot of people say like if cena went down or if cena got hurt or if he or if he just left then they don't have a big star that's on cena's level and that's not true they nope. have they just need, they have Brian, they have Ziggler, they have Reigns, they have Rollins, they have Ambrose, they have Wyatt. All they need to do is actually get behind that person fully, like they've gotten behind John Cena back in 2004, and mm-hmm. you're off to the races again. Right. I mean, oh my God. Did you, you, saw, see... you saw Randy Orton around, too. I mean, he's kind of a big name. That, and look how fast the people got behind Axel, Curtis <laughs> Axel last night with Axel I felt Mania. so happy for him. He like, finally got something. So much. That's the Fandango effect. It, it, yeah, and it is. And people aren't going. It's not going to last. And it's definitely not going to last. But like, for him to have that moment where people were cheering him, like, but against, to be level, fair, against John Cena too. Against but John to Cena. be fair, that was a heel effing crowd. <laughs> but yes. it was a, no, it wasn't a heel crowd. It was crowd yes, that, that I came know. In. I'm with. I mean, it's Jersey. It was a heel crowd. It was no, they, no. They, they it it was a heel stuff. crowd. I'm going with it was a heel crowd. They did some. They did some stuff I wasn't happy. It was. It, it was an they, asshole they crowd. Back when he had, when he turned his back on John Cena. Don't I don't get me Again, wrong. Again, not really a big deal. Don't get me wrong. I loved that the crowd was so absolutely insane. I loved that, but that was a mm-hmm. damn heel crowd. That crowd was yeah. a, a lot better than the Na- or than the Memphis crowd or whatever it was. Right, and the fast lane. Right. Right. Uh, like that yeah, crowd, that uh, that, and, and I believe that. I'm sorry, a crowd makes a show. Just mm-hmm. like the people mm-hmm. that you watch that wrestling show with, turn your opinion of whether that was a good show. Uh, and I, th- oh, yeah. I think that's part of why NXT is so popular now. That crowd is always in, no matter what. Yeah, right? they're always behind certain wrestlers. How, you know, 
how many it's times? a great crowd and also at times they can be super snarky and i can get angry yeah. at them too right. and and that but that goes to the source point like right. you know the crowd really defines you know it's half the fun of watching watching it though all right we'll get into more of this let us know what you think of uh raw this week the iw the iw air Connell title the ic <laughs> title IWC title. Tell me about that too. What do you think about? Hey, yeah, our, the, the, the Tommy Dreamer's a champ. Yay! Uh, <laughs> EC Dub. EC Dub. IWC. IC Dub. IWC. IWC. Shane Douglas got everybody chanting uh, ICW at a show one time. <laughs> and we're like, no, great moment. I don't know why everybody's playing along, but no, that's not the initials. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for trying to get us over but the uh, international <laughs> cartel of wrestling right so it's on the turnbuckle pads right beside you <laughs> you know he can't read he can't read <laughs> he's not really he wasn't really a teacher or wrestling i don't know some actually somebody in our chat room i think he's still in there actually had dean douglas as a substitute teacher once legit what? yeah oh, oh god no. i'm so sorry did he, wow. did he scratch the uh, chalkboard? <laughs> <laughs> I was a little uh, Cole Man of Podcast. I'm talking about that. So interesting. <laughs> He's so mad. He's so angry at everything. Absolutely everything. Uh, it's interesting. Be I've, at I've, an I've, indie show with that man. My God. Oh, you hear I'm sorry. We're turning into a whole different podcast here. <laughs> right? <laughs> When's the last time we went on a tangent like this, though? At least we're still staying on wrestling. Remember we Welcome, just. Right, right. Welcome dude. to Shane Douglas Memories. <laughs> <laughs> Shane Douglas. I'm a fat man, Dusty Rhodes. <laughs> throw down your belt. Everyone, throw about, down your belts. Uh, well, actually, though, it was, but no, go listen to Art of Wrestling. It, it was a couple weeks ago. They did a live one from some con with Shane Douglas and Hacksaw on there. Great stories from both of them, including um, um, Shane Douglas going to become Dean Douglas and when they revealed that he was going to be one of the dynamic dudes and what happened Ooh, uh-huh. in Philadelphia. As a dynamic dudes, um, that uh, that I'll just leave that. There's a good story in there about that. And you know, you thought you <laughs> thought Newark was a heel crowd, Philadelphia turning on the dynamic dudes. Just just saying. Sword Philly booed Santa Claus. <laughs> you don't boo Philly, look, fucking heathens over there. Um, <laughs> but you know what? Heathens love Welcome pizza. To the Buck Philly podcast. Heathens love pizza. You know what Philly doesn't have? Slice on Broadway. I'm getting hungry. Nope, the more they I talk the about steak, this. They got the Philly got steak. The pizza. I think they got a Philly steak pizza out there. I, you know what? I bet if you ask, they will make you a Philly steak pizza down there. I'm hoping I'm not asking you. too much of them with that. I don't know. Do they have Philly steak? I, I'd imagine they... Tell them, tell them the Wrestling Mayhem show told you you could and that you have to do it now. <laughs> no, tell them specifically... Sorgatron said it was okay. Yeah, oh. and, and Sorg said you had all the toppings for that, and if you don't have it, then... I bet they and if will. they don't give you enough it. onions, you complain, and you say Sorg said extra onions. Extra onions. And make sure they have the Whiz. What? The wi- Cheese Whiz. Cheese oh, oh. Whiz. You've, never been to, you've never been to Philadelphia. <laughs> no, make sure they're playing the movie The Whiz. <laughs> On all oh. televisions. They have TVs. Oh. They do have TVs. You gotta watch the game in there. <laughs> they have TVs. They have TVs. Or you can it's watch like, the Wiz. Whatever. He's He's or on watch down the down Wizard with Fred Savage. I don't know. As long as you visit our friends at Slice on Broadway, sliceonbroadway.com, Beachview, uh, in the South Hills of Pittsburgh, also Main Street down at Carnegie PA if you're visiting. Uh great stuff. Um, um from scratch. Uh, love it. I look uh, looks forward to the 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 the, the podcast uh promoting and supporting pittsburgh pizza i was trying to add more peas in there see where we can get with this um but great stuff there you uh, had problems with the peas earlier sword no pizza. slice on broadway.com please go check them out and let them know the wrestling mayhem show sent you and thank them for supporting the wrestling mayhem show and the fine podcast over at sorgatron media pgh underscore slice on twitter Hit them up there or uh, Slice on Broadway on Facebook and Instagram. They will make you hungry. And they have a lot of fun. Yes, they do. And a lot of fun, too. So. And I had a piece of pizza at a mm-hmm. wrestling show. I brought you one. And it was cold as all yes. hell because we had to drive an hour uh, to get it to you. But um, And it was still just as good. We might have stopped at Sheets somewhere in there, too. So, 
Um, wouldn't be really mean if I would have just swapped a uh, sheets pizza. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't Over. do that for you. I wouldn't do that to you. And I actually want you to say nice things about Slice. So I'll actually bring you their pizza. So, anyways, yeah. there you go. There you go. It travels well. It definitely travels well. We'll be yes, right back does. with the big question. Ladies and gentlemen, let's go Anderson. Anderson. And it's the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Still rolling here. Oh, I hate rolling. I hate when they use it on the commentary and everything. But it is time for that big question of the week. Now DJ Lunchbox is on a sabbatical. Right? What? Yes. Okay. Jerk off it's bad. It's bad. <laughs> and Mad Mike is going to fill in this week with the big question. That I am. And if it's a good question, maybe I'll do it next week. If not, maybe it'll go to someone else. But, uh... This week's big question. Last week, we had a huge uh, trending topic. Hashtag give divas a chance. Right. Now, um, while it's a very admirable hashtag, and I think it benefited this week's Raw a little bit, I'm wondering if it's a little bit better to hashtag give divas a storyline. And I wanted to know everyone's thoughts on if it would be better for the divas to have just longer matches or actual progressive storylines. Hmm. Hmm. And I think I will go with Eamon first. Yeah, because you know I can talk about this. This is what I'm saying, yes. Um, I would go with the latter. I think progressive storylines are more important than anything. Um, like I, like I kind of mentioned in the Hangout uh, during Raw, uh, somebody brought up, I think it was Mike actually that brought up the like I wish you know Paige and Nikki Bella like main evented and they got like a 20 minute match or whatever and my original thought was I don't want that to happen because you know the Paige getting another title shot actually really doesn't make a whole lot of sense like it's not about just having matches it's about getting people invested into the characters right. you know that's something that I think has been the case for years and years and years in WWE even when you know, in, in certain areas where the women's wrestling wasn't ideal, um, they had stories at least, and they had motivations, and they had, you know, places to be on the show, and they weren't just filler. They, you know, I even the best stuff would like say, even if you want to say like Trish and Lita, that era of, you know, women in WWE, was it the wrestling? Sort of, but, but Trish and Lita weren't spectacular, like, amazing like cutting edge professional wrestlers necessarily but they were put in really big storylines they were considered a big deal they were you know they shared the spotlight with some of the top uh talents you know and and you know weren't afraid to get get involved and i think that's what carried them and i don't think i think you can see the same thing for you know wwe nowadays i think people and maybe it's because of the whole pg thing but i feel like the women are so set they're so much in their own world and they're not allowed to interact with the men they're not allowed to have you know any sort of they're just supposed to be the divas division and you're supposed to have a divas match on the show and it's going to be you know whoever is important versus pick a diva and then they win in two minutes and that's it and and that's what we've been seeing on the main roster um and and that's been really disappointing that's been the disappo- disappointing point uh about it all uh, so storylines, I think, are definitely should be the main focus more than longer matches. I think that none of us can give a more complete answer than he just gave. I'm sorry, <laughs> <laughs> unless people disagree. No, that was amazing. Actually, that was that was tremendous. Um, I I mean, I think um, my my personal answer, like I looked to someone like Sexy Star, <laughs> Lucha <laughs> Underground, and I think the WWE, if they take the right steps, can do that if they, A, allow it to happen. Because the only re- the only women's wrestler that we've seen that's gotten to really interact with the men in the ring is China. Mm-hmm. That's not a good standard because... China. Uh, yeah, because it's China. It, or Nicole Bass. Or, you know... But, but even then, even Nicole Bass was considered very jokey. Yeah, it's very much like look at this freak. 
I mean, I think you could start that on NXT. I honestly think you could. I think you could bring in someone. Hell, you could bring in Sarah Del Rey mm. and just have her like randomly attack Sami Zayn. Like, I, I don't see there would like I think you'd have to start it slow. I don't think you could do it on Raw where what right away. Yeah. I think you could start an infusion of that kind of talent because honestly, Sexy Star is one of my favorite characters on Lucha Underground. Because she isn't she is a an underdog in every match, which is something WWE loves. Absolutely loves doing. They try and make John Cena an underdog in every match. It never works because he's John fucking Cena. If you had a talented female wrestler come into NXT and immediately start working with the men instead of the women. Like if she says that, listen, when I was a little girl, I didn't dream of being the women's champion. I dreamt of being WWE champion. And you can start a storyline like that, and I think it would work. I, I, I do agree. Uh, I would love to see that happen. I do think it needs to be a bit of a – it needs to be a certain thing that makes, I think, a bit of – not not, not stay in a bit of sense, but like you mentioned, like Charlotte attacking Sami Zayn or whatever. Like I don't know if that would be the case. Like I would say like Charlotte going after maybe another second or third generation wrestler who is all about – like feuding with like Curtis Axel. And, be, and being like, I've lived up to my dad's standard way more than you lived up to yours. And just because I'm a woman, I'm not looked at the same way. That's that's compelling, and that has motivation, I think. And, that, would and, actually, that would actually be a hell of a lot of fun, too. Mm-hmm. All right, uh, we'll go with Riz. Um, yeah. Am I still muted? No, I'm good. No? All right, um, honestly... I don't think it would I, – I don't know, really. Like, it, it's one of those things where it, it's fine to fantasy book things like this because it, it shows that we do care about stuff like that. But we are just here. Who knows what's going to work? It is, And it's just point the point where just watch it. Don't try to book it. Just watch. I don't – like it, it, I'm probably sugarcoating. I'm tr- probably tiptoeing through the answer here, but uh, the give divas a chance thing was cool, was good, because it got that voice out there. Uh, but WWE is a different breed, and if they if they change, they're probably going to. It's just to the point where it's like okay. So now everybody's going to have to have a wrestling thing, even though it is from our truth. Uh, but it got to the point where it's just, eh. Like, if, it, if it happens, it happens. If not, if it doesn't. I don't, I don't know what else I to say, really. Uh, I'm also dealing with my little whiny little dog here. Uh, but, <laughs> I was going to say. Hence our awesome but, shot of your chin. It is an awesome. Hello. I am an awesome. Chin. Hi, Riz. Chin. Uh, but what does the rest of you think of this question? <laughs> the rest of me thinks my chin is awesome, sort. All right. <laughs> uh, how, how about you, Bobby? Um, I think that uh, the divas, uh, like Gaiman was saying, you need you need the storyline. You need. I think you need wrestling too, though, because if you have a storyline and the, the matches aren't very good, it's not going to work. Like Cameron, if you had, you know I mean? and, and vice versa. If you have a good wrestling match and there's no story behind it, that's not going to really. I mean, it's going to be great, but it's not going to work either. You need mm-hmm. both a storyline and a wrestling. And I think until they have that, where you have like the, the AJ and Page stuff, that was good storytelling, and it was it, they had some good matches. People were interested in the Divas then, and I think it, I think it could be like that. I think with AJ coming back. And possibly having a match with Paige and Nikki Bella and Brie Bella, maybe a Fatal Four Way or or tag match, whatever it is, mm-hmm. it's going to be kind of cool. Plus the uh, Naomi and Natalia part of the tag match with Cesaro and uh, Tyson Kidd and the Usos, that is interesting too because they brought mm-hmm. a storyline into it, and they're having really good wrestling matches too. So I agree. 
I, I think also like the the concept of giving the wrestlers characters because I think in my opinion, in at least with the current division we have now, it's either three cases: either you're catty and a heel, or you're crazy, or you don't have a character. Yeah, and then that's kind of sad. Or your Rosamund. <laughs> or your well, and, and Rose is one of those that doesn't have to, like what is Rosamund as his character? What is you know Alicia Fox's character? Fandango's prop? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> propping up Fandango. Uh, what about you, Wheels? Uh, I agree with Bobby and Sir Eamon. Um, I think honestly, you give people a good story and good matches, like. Okay, you have Paige and you have AJ back, basically. Both anti-divas. You have the Bellas, divas. Natty is definitely a woman's wrestler, not a diva. She may be on total divas, but she's a wrestler. You know what you do? You build a story of, you know what? We're tired of fighting for this Barbie doll belt. We want to be women's champions. They bring that back. And you have... A battle of those two, and I mean, I'm sorry, I hate that damn butterfly belt, and it's annoying to me to be honest. Do you just I hate mean, the term I divas think, in general? Yeah, just turn the divas into women's wrestlers. Mills, they can do it. Mills, do you mean the tramps? They have championship of the world. Exactly. Well, you, the only thing is, you have to think of this from a marketing standpoint. You do because the male wrestlers aren't called the WWE male wrestlers; they're yeah, called they're WWE. They're called WWE superstars. Mm -hmm. Like you do, kind of need a way to delineate because otherwise you're referring to everyone on the roster as a superstar. That's true. I I, I think also though that when you see like a lot of like if you I, I don't know why I'm using this as an example, but like go to like shop and li look at the listings of stuff. Besides maybe like AJ, who's like probably one of the only ones that sticks out, but it'll be like a list of male wrestlers and then divas. Like the divas yeah. are like a co are considered like a collective unit. They're considered a collective brand or a collective. They're they're, they're a sub brand. Yeah, they, they 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 have made it a point to make the make the divas or make the butterfly, you know, pink, purple, all that stuff. Well, like, well very yeah. very clearly, it's it's the superstars are the he mans and the um and the um uh you yeah, know the divas the, the divas are the yeah the yeah. sheras. I was gonna say. Uh, Barbies, but but no, but but yeah, actually more the Shira kind of thing, isn't it? Like the oh, they're they're kind of the same universe, but these ones a little more girly, right? And think about the Shira thing; it is kind of a butterfly with that one character in Shira. It's a butterfly, so okay, yeah, somebody's a Masters of the Universe fan that designed that belt. <laughs> yeah. So okay, okay, I could see that happening, but I mean. Maybe redesign it with a smaller butterfly, but make it more of a championship that's sellable to the young girls out there. It's not really that. Make it like the NXT on. Women's Championship. Yeah, yeah, that's nice. That's like, I think that is actually nicer than most of the belts in WWE. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Honestly, I agree, Bobby. I agree. And plus, I don't think at this point you can really eliminate the, the term divas because you also have now a TV show on the E network, yeah. right? That's it does it pretty well. I mean, total women's. That's the thing; it works, <laughs> and you have things like the Bellas supposedly uh, breaking records as far as merchandise and everything. I mean, it is a brand. And that's great. It is a brand, and it is something that 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 girls do can look up to to a certain point. I hope the little girls aren't watching Total Divas. Um, right. Well, well you know, the thing. I, I think if people get inspiration from that and get inspiration from that field, that's fine. You know, people are into Total Divas. It's it's become extremely popular. I just wish that the popularity that was gained from that show told WWE, hey, maybe we should put some time into these women. And I think that's what the total the Give Divas a Chance thing comes about is that the fact that they are so successful in this medium should translate into them gaining more stuff on the show. Right. Yeah. And being treated with a bit more respect. I almost wish Total Divas was filmed without a tape delay. I thought you were gonna say in front of a live stream. Yeah, because no, mean... no, no. But like without a tape delay, so you could kind of get like you could build, you could use that whole show as a build up for angles, 
on Raw and SmackDown. Right. And, and they, that, that's what they tried to do too. But the issue with that was because it, it was from storylines that happened like eight months ago. So, it, right. it, you know, but, but there's nothing wrong with it. That's build. That's building storylines. It's building characters. You know, they, N- Natalia's character came from Total Divas pretty much. It is, her, it is her issues with her husband. And like, it's, it's interesting how they do cross that over. It is character development. Um, cause even at least the, uh, Naomi and Natty thing, they, they, they yeah. mentioned, Oh, they've been, Good and uh, Naomi's been helping her out on Total Divas. Naomi's, but not now just, they, not, it, Naomi's now. no longer just the funcodactyl chick. She's right, now right. married to one of the Usos, and that's part of her character now. Well, it also helped that they essentially. I like how that's now a character. It, well, it, it, it also, trains to an Uso. It also helped that they essentially filmed the Total Divas segment for SmackDown. Yeah, yeah. The the whole restaurant angle was something you would see out of Total Divas. Mm, that's true. Now, uh, we, we didn't get everyone. We got uh, Mainstream Matt with one T. Uh, one T. What are your thoughts on the big question this week? Um, first of all, I just wanted to say that I think it's kind of silly that we're complaining about the the, the uh, design of the Divas title. Thank you. When we watch a professional wrestling organization that was rolling with a spinner belt as its top title <laughs> for true. God knows how long. True, true. Mm-hmm. Backed. Anyway. Um <laughs> Uh, as far as uh, storylines versus in ring, for me, it's always in ring first. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd be just for example, um, TNA. TNA could do the most wonderful storylines in the world, and they've tried, and they've kind of <laughs> hooked me in every yeah. once in a while. But the thing that usually turns me off from TNA, makes me stop watching, is the in ring because the in ring. Mm-hmm doesn't work for me really kind of the mm-hmm. same deal sometimes with the girls when they cross this line where what they're doing in the ring no longer seems viable or realistic and you can't make that leap and kind of put yourself in the moment then you're lost so when kelly kelly is kind of half stepping into the ropes as she's trying to run the ropes bless her heart <laughs> that kind of takes you out of the experience a little bit so it always goes back to the end ring. I will never forget this clip. I have no idea where I saw it. It was a clip of Natty uh, chain wrestling, I guess. Um, it was just some training session, and she was so freaking fast, <laughs> flipping and spinning around and arm barring, chain wrestling her butt off. And I was like, holy crap. So if you can do it in the ring, you'll win people over. And basically, that's the base storyline of all wrestling is here's one person here's yeah. one person let's fight let's see who's the best that's but also, basic but also, storytelling if you want to look at sort of comparing it to tna too look at you know their knockouts i think a lot of people were very much so I've, I've seen a lot of people that are like the knockout division is so much better because you know they're they're you know it's because not. of the work that they do and it's not but it's but, not but because gail and taryn terrell you know do bumps on the steel steps and on the stage and 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 do all this crazy stuff that's considered better it's, well, take, I, it's I, taken I more it seriously. Out. It's taken more seriously. I will give TNA that. Yeah, but it still doesn't have that same effect, though. I, and I, I, I'm, not, I'm not ever invested in a knockouts match. And I just well, want you don't to clarify that when I'm, talking about the <laughs> in-ring and, when I'm talking about the in-ring and TNA, I'm not just singling out the knockouts. I'm talking about TNA. No, I, no, I, I, I was assuming that you were, yeah. Okay. I can't. I can't watch a Mr. Anderson match to save my life. I'll, get, I'll, I'll give you that, Matt. But... <laughs> I haven't had that problem in a while. Thank goodness yeah. they moved to Fridays. Anyway, what are we talking about next, guys? Um, well, <laughs> I'm so, I think Sorg still hasn't answered the question. So oh, I, 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 I'm still back on Eamon's answer, actually. <clears throat> uh, what was the original question again? It's been so long. Uh, it, it was: Do we value the wrestling versus the storylines for Divas? Is it, what, you know, we want one or the other, right? Yes. Um, I think uh, oh. I, I think everything needs to be valued. I mean, yeah. this is Don't sports entertainment. It needs together? to be equal parts, and both have to be. I mean, it, it does seem, if anything, the Divas get too much storyline and not enough wrestling to happen. You know, um, I thought the perfect thing was a few weeks ago when we did get Paige. And the uh, stolen uh, gear kind of thing, and we got to turn it into a moment that I think we're going to remember a little bit here, where she mm-hmm. took one of the the rosebuds thing uh, uh, outfits and and wrestled in it, and wrestled in it. You know, I mean, we still had wrestling in this goofy storyline that happened that was just kind of a throwaway thing one week uh, in her ongoing thing with the, with the Bellas. Um, 
so I think uh, no, yeah, I think it needs to be kind of an even kill thing. Um, I, I I really feel like they just said, yeah, we don't really have to do much with the divas, but we have to fill three minutes. Here you go. That yeah. week, and it just happened at the wrong time, <laughs> the very wrong time. After uh, women's equality is the big issue of the week. Thank you, Patricia Arquette. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and 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 oh, and we're noticing, you know, we're a bunch of dudes defending women's wrestling. But we want to see good wrestling. We want to and, see it, and we and want. That, and, and that's the thing about the whole like wrestling versus storytelling. This isn't from a fact of like, you know, hire wrestlers and bring in actual wrestlers and not these models. Because I'm sure the Bella Twins can wrestle. I, I enjoyed the Paige Nikki Bella match for what it was. It was right. A good match. You know, it, it's just about giving them time and devoting time to the wrestling, which you, it shouldn't be really hard to do in a three-hour wrestling show. Yeah, I mean, honestly, there's only three people. Uh, three three women on that roster that I don't believe can wrestle to the point that WWE need, needs them to be. Yeah, and those are the three that haven't been on the show in a long time: Cameron, Rosa, and Eva. Two of which, two of which they've been sending to everything that doesn't involve wrestling that they can, mm-hmm. um, and the other the other one does the dancing. So yep. they fa- they have a spot. I mean, it's I mean, Lon is not a wrestler. Yeah. But she has a spot that makes sense. That's fine. If, Lana's probably if, one of the, besides like Stephanie, like Lana's one of the more compelling female characters. Right. Like, Lana's, Lana's also show. an actress. Right. Yeah. But, so Lana's sure. also an actress. Like she. But she's a contributing factor, and that's fine. I, I mean, I would be okay, I think, if I thought they could act to save them li- their lives. If Eva and uh, and the other one, I keep forgetting her name because Total Cameron. Divas confuses Cameron. Cameron. Um, um, just became managers. Just became valets. Oh my god, I would I'd kill for Eva to become a heel manager. But, yeah, I mean, she, I think I think Eva would actually thrive as a heel because manager because she reminds me of all the girls I hated in high school. And perfect. Uh, mm-hmm. well, there's a good starting point, and we could do some of that. Team her up with uh, Axel Mania. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I also love the idea of having her win the Divas Championship. And the story of it being that it was like in some fluke way, and she doesn't deserve it. Like it's very clear well, out that she doesn't deserve it. We did that. That was um, kind of the original angle they ran with Trish. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They did. Like back in the day, de- back in oh, I gotta say it was like '98 or something like that. Like they had a six pack challenge or something like that, and Trish was literally like green as hell. She was. The rookie, and she was in there against, like I think Ivory and uh, Jackie Jacqueline and, and Jazz and, and Jazz and, and like all these real tough women wrestlers. And Trish came out winning, and she and everyone else was shocked by it. Like, but but I but what I'm kind of saying is doing it and taking it into a heel route, and more of like a like when Stephanie McMahon won the title, like the fact that she shouldn't be winning the women's championship, and the other women on the show who are wrestlers and have been working hard for this are pissed about that and try to get it back. I feel like that's something cool that you could do and, and it would tell a good story. And, like and, put Eva with, put Eva with uh, Seth Rollins. Yeah. And, but, but make it to the point where like she doesn't have to wrestle massive matches and just have her dodge constantly. And that'll, that'll generate heat because the fans will be fucking pissed about it. <laughs> and, and, and you know, like that'll be something compelling. Right. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, on that point, um, we if you have any, uh, any thoughts on the big question, which is, you know, storytelling versus wrestling, what should Divas be given more of in this? Uh, please know, let us know on Twitter. Hashtag WMS Big Question. And why do you want to do that? Because uh, if you do that and make sure you add us uh, at Mayhem Show as well, uh, you will have a chance to win a, uh, a digital title from uh, PittsburghWrestling.com, IndieWrestling.us. Uh, this week we're looking at uh, VOW's Vicious Outcast Wrestling's uh, two-year anniversary, which actually features Rhino, who's been appearing on NXT most recently, against the Super Beast, who is absolutely insane, guys, um, and a bunch of other uh, uh, really uh, friends of the show guys we talked to on the indie mayhem show like g raver like andrew palace and jess flex or gory um a lot of great stuff i've been really involved i actually took myself down to a vow show last month um can't make it this month because i'll be in clearfield for iwc unfortunately um 
for that. Uh, it, it, and it's a really fun show. And they, they got a really cool thing going down going on down there here south of Pittsburgh. And you can check out all the titles for as low as 99 cents. There's actually a show with Gold Dust on it. One of their first shows with uh, for 99 cents. Uh, not the greatest video quality, but still uh, plenty watchable. Um, so go check that out. Uh, 99 cents to 7.99 if you want to check it out at pittsburghwrestling.com and click on the VOW banner on that page or check out anything else going on. We actually got a sale going on as well. Um, speaking of, as we plug a little bit of pittsburghwrestling.com, um, we have a sale, combat and clear fills coming up this weekend. We'll talk about a bit more on the indie wrestling or indie mayhem show later, or check it on wrestling Uh, but we do have a special, any, uh, uh clear field show, uh, use the coupon code for digital downloads, uh, combat, and you'll get 50% off some great shows. Uh, this includes, uh, a, a combat and clear field uh four five six and seven uh great matches on there with guys like ring of honor uh tag team champion forever it seems uh mr bobby fish uh you got guys like dj zima ion michael elgin thank you thank you michael elgin from (laughs) ring of honor fame is on there as well and other guys like logan shulu who's uh popping up a little bit in nxt colin delaney's on on a few of these um a lot of a lot of cool faces from there and uh you can go pittsburghwrestling.com click on international wrestling cartel use the coupon code combat for 50 percent off and uh, check out what we're doing all the way up in clearfield pa when we go out for these shows and stay tuned and sign up for the uh newsletter as well you can still pick up iwc's 100th uh show including guys like aj styles christopher daniels for free if you're a first time sign up for the newsletter at pittsburghwrestling.com right there on the right of your screen get it for free we'll send it off to you all right, let's get into, speaking of guys like AJ Styles, not that they're around anymore, the mass exodus that's happening in that vein. Uh, let's find out what's going on for a moment in Impact Wrestling. Mike, what's happening? Sorg, it's so sad. Oh, geez. I, we need to act. I feel like you start that every week that way. It really, I, I feel like I'm, like, I, I watched the show Last Man on Earth this weekend, and that's how I feel watching Impact. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's uh, hold on, hold on. I got I, okay. apparently like from the way that you're um, talking about this, I'm going into the title right now because I feel like we've been uh, miscoloring this. Your your title does not seem to match your attitude towards the situation. What's going on over there? So uh, let me try this. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, boy. <laughs> Point sword. So was, now that the like, segment impact is impact wrestling is neither impact nor wrestling. <laughs> but so now now that we've uh, labeled this the impact death watch for uh, people on audio, <laughs> what's happening? Oh, which man. I'm sad. By the way, I am so sad for this. I wanted this destination America to be a rebirth of a sorts for them, but it's it's it sounds like this isn't happening. I mean, we we have friends down there. You know, yeah. I mean that, that this is. The, burr, 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 burr. I mean, I, I, I don't. I, I want to make clear. None of us want impact to go away. God no, no. I, but, I really, really don't want. Impact but we to go don't want to see it in a whimpering death either. Um, you know, I mean, it just it's another place for people to be employed. It's, it's another place for you know friends of us to get chances. You know that we know from the indies. I, I, I we. Please. Uh, okay, uh, let's okay. What I don't want you to tell me everything is wrong with him back. What did they do right this week? Uh I mean if if that's going to be our segment, what I like on impact this great week. Great segment. I I may actually get it under a minute. Um No, honestly, the the Terrence Rell stuff is good. The Terrence Rell stuff is very good because she's uh she wants to challenge Awesome Kong. Awesome oh. Kong comes in and destroys her, and I think they have a match next week. Um, that stuff is good. I really, really like what they're doing with that. Um, the I I want to say I like the EC3 stuff, but I don't now because it's tainted by fucking Ken Anderson, and like, and it seems like they've already gotten rid of Mark Andrews in the whole storyline. And good for him. <laughs> yep. We've gone from Mandrews to Manderson, and that's what I'm calling him from now on, is hmm. Manderson. Why, why give the young kid that you gave a reality show a chance? And also, Grado was on again this week for some fucking reason. Why do you hate Grado? 
Because I have no... They have given me no reason to care about him, Amy. It's your soul. <laughs> you have to do it yourself. I, no, I don't. Fuck I'm that. So, no, I'm not saying that. No, I'm, like, I don't. Of, Great. I'm saying so Impact's not going to... I'm saying Impact's not going to give anything to you. No. Well, that, no, they give me stuff with other people. Well, that's their fault. <laughs> No, but I'm saying if they're not going to give me a reason to care about Grado, then I'm not going to care about Grado. Well, you should check out some ICW then for me. No, no, I'm not gonna do that. You should. I w- I watch enough stuff during the week. Yeah, but, but um, uh, the the TNA title match was just a clusterfuck of a thing. Um, it was just like it was a no DQ match where the oh, beatdown clan were. Outside the ring the entire time, and why they didn't go in the ring, I'll never know. Because it's not like the referee can DQ them, because he can't. It's not like he, if he kicks them out and they don't leave, he can do anything. Because there's no governing body in TNA. They've I, done that before. Yeah, but I, I can't believe I'm saying this. I need a GM on Impact. I need some form of authority because otherwise, this is just complete bullshit. To, and to be fair, I mean, this is a show that there is always, always, always an authority figure battle for how yeah. many years? It was always, hey, we just got control of impact. Here comes the next group to challenge that. Um, and now you're saying there's nothing. So nobody's nothing. in control. There's nothing. I don't know how any matches are made. I I would have assumed Dixie Carter was healed from her table bump months ago. Why didn't she just come back? It's not like she actually lost power. She's still the owner of the fucking company. Like, there's there's a power vacuum in TNA, and they're trying to explain it away with this top five, which makes no goddamn sense whatsoever. Because, A, they don't announce the top five on Impact. They announce the top five on a replay of Impact on Saturday. Mm. And they give the reasoning for that not on their main show, yet it's all their main <sighs> show talks about. I'm not going to watch Impact a second time just to find out who the top five is. You're saying that they're flawed. All right, that's enough. That's Slightly, enough. That's yes. enough. That's enough. No more Impact. Can we talk about happy things? Can we get happy? Oh, but speaking of Impact Death Watch, uh, Samojo looks so disinterested right now. <laughs> I wonder why. Knowing, especially knowing that he's uh, he like this is literally the death march of Samoa Joe in TNA. It's Joe's march to freedom. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I, I oh, oh my god Mark, Samoa Mark's Joe 12 years a slave that's a nice <laughs> oh, 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 he's been oh, in TNA for 12 years oh, he's been in TNA for 12 years that just got oh. weird okay guys let's bring it up a little bit it's the mayhem mania I don't even know what put my pillow back now your pillow Bobby what are you doing what was Bobby your... slept during impact. I went oh, to go. Geez. I went and got a drink, so this should be good. Yeah, we're we're comfortable now. We're all rested. All up right, we're to gonna go. toss it up to Matt Carlin. It is time for Mayhem Mania. This is week. Or what is this week seven? Is Round that seven. seven. And I have something to say about that. So much going on right now, Sorry, oh, as man, you man. know. So much happening. That steamboat thing match. I... Welcome to oh. round seven of Mayhem Mania. Um. Mayhem Mania is kind of a competitive thought experiment where we're trying to book the best WrestleMania card possible. Not that crap WWE is going to give you. Actually, a good card. Um, so we've got eight matches. In addition, we have the one that graduated, the Miz versus Damian Miz. Now, that's safe forever. That's unfortunate. Okay, got it. Um, so anyway, we've got eight matches. We've got six people. A sinister, a sinister six, if you will, who will make a oh, single move to this, uh, to these <sighs> matches. For, poor example, trading on an entire match for an entirely new match, trading one guy for one else. Hypothetically, if you wanted to, we could swap. One of you could swap Charlotte Char Char. You could swap her for Jack Swagger, and then we could have Jack Swagger versus Sasha. Uh, at, Res- at Mayhem Mania. It's just a hypothetical thing that could happen. Um, so there's something to think about. <laughs> now, um, uh, good news. In yeah, round yeah. seven, you all did very well last week with your punishment. The NXT ban has been lifted. Oh. So congratulations on that. Also, this week, we're adding a new element, and that is 
Oh, no. The ominous jar of mid carters. <laughs> <laughs> Ten names are in this bowl. The and jar. one of now, your lucky six will be randomly selected for me to draw a name a, from the jar of mid carters for you. Now, I have you a question. For a second. Yes, yes, Riz? Uh, what if we pick a mid carter that is on your list? Yeah, that's what I was this, thinking, too. I doubt you're gonna pick up these guys. <laughs> oh, you scrubbed the bottom of the big no, card. No, no, no one is so sure. You do not. You, you no do one not is trust our. Our, you do not um, trust our minds, do you? Um, oh, here. Let me tell you guys one more thing, Riz. Uh, or I'm sorry, Sorg. I told you that I had this thing booked backwards, and this thing was airtight. Um, I wanted to let you guys know. Fair warning. We were in round seven, and the time for screwing around is about over. Round eight is going to be the final round. Oh, what? Whoa. And in between Whoa. round seven and round eight, there will be the special Patreon in the bank round. Um, <laughs> we'll give you more details on that coming down the line. But um, I just wanted to give you guys some warning. WrestleMania may seem very far away, but the end of Mayhem Mania is closer than you think. So um, first, I have a dice. I have a die. Sorry, I have a die. I'm going to randomly select the number between one and six, um, who will be... Um, Chosen to draw from the jar of mid-carters, and then we'll get started with um, our number one uh, seed. So, uh, I don't know, just sing some music or something. Come on, seven. Come on, seven. Okay. So, I will mm. tell you guys, once you lucky son of a gun, I will, uh, once it comes to your turn, I will uh, make a sound or something. Oh, when you hear that, you'll know you are, <laughs> <laughs> you are, you are the jar of Bit Carters. Okay, let's get started. Riz, you're up, buddy. I'm up. Yeah, you are number one. I'm number and one. And Mike is on deck. If I were doing this. By the, by the way, I want to point I have, out, I love how clean that the sheet looks now. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm I gonna know. Be in a second. I mean, you didn't I have like a. Give you a fresh sheet. Oh, I should recap while Riz is thinking. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Recap. Let's recap the card here. Um, Bray Wyatt versus Luke Harper. <laughs> um, LB is going away. Present to all of us. The New Day versus Sheamus versus Jack Swagger versus Christian. Dolph Ziggler <laughs> versus. <laughs> Even my dad thinks that one's funny. All right. Dolph Ziggler <laughs> versus Daniel Bryan. Ricky the Dragon Steamboat yeah. versus Sting. Oh. John Ricky Steam the Dragon Steamboat. Me too. I love Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. Too. So now he he's older stu- than you. He has a studio audience over there. <laughs> John Cena versus Roman Reigns versus The Rock versus Alex Riley. Char Char versus Sasha. Rusev versus Brock Lesnar. And Gold Dust versus Star Dust. Okay. Riz, you got anything in the cranium? Um, before, before Riz goes, um, I, I do need to tell everyone involved in Mayhem Mania something. Um, DJ Lunchbox has charged me with a task to keep his fatal four-way match intact. Oh, no. Oh, no. So, You're a hired gun. I'm a hired gun. So if you fuck with that match, <laughs> I will end you. I will destroy whatever baby you've created in this mayhem mania, wow. and I will kill it. No, you have to kill it. I will kill it because we always have the possibility of WLC 2. All right, so <laughs> here's what I'm thinking. Take out Golden Stardust. What? What? Oh, what? oh you oh son of me. Oh, oh, God. I was almost graduated. You fucking heard me. Do it. <sighs> and let's put in. And now I need to think of a good one here. Oh you haven't even thought of what you're going to replace it with yet. Oh, it's in. It's somewhere up here. Riz, that that that. Shake that, it loose, that, buddy. That, that was one week away from retirement. That was yep. Dastardly. It was Danny Glover and Lethal Weapon, Riz. <laughs> Since the. NXT ban is lifted. Uh, let's put in Owens. Uh, Mr. Kevin Owens. Go on. Let me see here. Let me see. Let me look here. 
This and the big show. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God damn I'm you. In. I'm in. Wow. God damn you, Riz. That hurt my Jimmy. heart, Riz. Wow. <laughs> yes, I well, damn did. Owens no-selling the KO punch and then package pal driving the big show wow. through a table. <laughs> That's spoiler alert, and you know it. <laughs> All right, cool. All yeah. right, that brings us to Mad Mike. You're up. Bobby, you're on deck. ka ka Oh, oh motherfucker! Oh, no! Motherfucker! I knew it was going to be me! Mike! God damn it! Mike! You've been chosen. Uh, 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 uh. Fate has decided who will draw from the jar of Meg Carters. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Well, it's it's gonna be, be, it's hold on. Before you read this, I want to make a guess as to who it is because I know my luck. It's going to be Fandango. Axel Mania. A uh, little music, guys, while I go We're also a different tune. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Mad Mike, it is not Fandango. Thank God. My friend, you have drawn Sin Cara. No, that's actually a good card. That's actually a good God damn it. It's it's current. It's current. Notice notice there's. (laughs) May I give him a suggestion? And I was. No. No, no. Fuck no. you. Please okay. no help from the studio audience. Oh, whatever. Uh, God. Fine. What would LB say now? Well, I, at this <laughs> point, I can't do anything. I'm sorry, LB. Uh, oh, man. Sin Cara. Mm. Be a hell of a five way. Mm. Just say it. <laughs> he can't. He can't. No, no. I, no, I can't oh. even add to it. Nope. I must preserve it. That's that's the whole thing. Um, all right, all right. You know what? Into something that's here, you can swap out somebody for it. You could create a match with Sin Cara versus some other homie. Uh, all right. I'm going to. mm, All right. Uh, fuck. Um, god damn it! And I had something I (laughs) wanted to do too. And now um, I'm just completely well, bamboozled. Well, while, while, you're, while you're stammering, Bobby, you're on deck, so please come up with something. I got something. All right. <laughs> but, uh, I actually I have head. something for that match, too, for that card, too. <laughs> but you should have thought of that before you took my match out. Well, you know what? Uh, all right, you know what? All right, here's... Uh, I don't want to do this, but I'm going to. Um, We're going to... Okay. Oh no! Well, you cut off. What you cut out? I'm sorry. We're gonna take out. We're gonna take out that six man tag. Okay. All right, that's what I was gonna do. The new day versus Sheamus, Swagger, and Christian. That's done. That's archives. Um, you know what? Fuck it. This is what we're doing. Lucha Dragons versus Brothers of Destruction. Oh wait, <laughs> wait, wait, come yeah, again? You can do that. Wait. Okay, that is not okay. The Lucha Dragons versus the Undertaker and Kane. Yes, yeah, they're both. That you have the tag team champions there. That is happening. Lucha Dragons versus Taker and Kane. You just want to see Undertaker give Kalisto the last drive, so you can just see how high he could throw him into the air before he power him. Yes, high. sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Three bags full. <laughs> you, you know, that I'm is, sorry. You were the that one that is forced- making lemonade out of lemons, Mike. I was gonna oh, put. I was Matt. I before we move on, I have a question because it pertains to what my original move was going to be. If uh, someone puts back on Goldust versus Stardust, will it count as staying on for the week? Um. Yeah, I would have to say it, it, that would count. Okay. Okay. Because I, would, I was just curious because be I was good. Gonna... <laughs> even though it was... barely survived, I mean, it would have survived three rounds. So yes, yes, I would say it would have three consecutive okay. rounds. It would have survived three consecutive rounds. Yeah. Okay. Yes, most definitely. Oh, uh, that might change my plans then. See, because I was gonna take off that stupid Wyatt Harper match and put on Goldust and start us again. <laughs> hmm. All right, gonna... Bobby, you're up. Wheels is on deck. Well, I was going to take off the other graduated match, but since that rule's in effect, take off Owens versus uh, Big Show. Ha ha ha! Dirty pool. What, you want Goldust versus Stardust back? Yes, that was my match. I want to back yeah. on the card. 
Bobby, yes. I, I well, I won't say what. I'll I say am proud of you, what Bobby. I, was go- I will say after what I was gonna do if I couldn't do that. Bobby, Bobby, you, Sorry, have, you have done the Mayhem show a great service. And also, I just realized Eamon is now gone from the chat. Yeah, he's room. gone. I invited him back. So did I. Bobby, I just want to tell you, I always keep notes for this so we can recap it later on the blog. And for your move, I just scribbled down a picture of an undo button and pointed up at Rose's move. <laughs> the undo button. <laughs> Uh, Wills, you're button. up. Um, if Eamon can't show up in time, I will take his turn. Eamon, you're on Alrighty, the clock. sir. Wills, Eamon's on deck. Alrighty. I'm going to add to a match, to be honest. Wills, don't, don't you dare. Don't do you it. Dare, it's Wheels. going to be so freaking awesome. Oh, no. Uh-oh. Wheels, I'm don't gonna you dare. I'm going to add to the Ziggler and Brian match. Oh, no. Neville and Zane. You can only add one. Only one. All right. I'm going to add Zane. All right. I think this this match match has been through Ziggler Brian. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Brian Brian (laughs) Atami. Ziggler Atami. Brian versus Zane. Brian versus Neville, I think, was there for a week. And now it's just adding on. It, it, hey, at least it's, it's a triple threat now. So No one can decide how much work uh, rate work rate we want. So <laughs> Everyone knows so, nobody's so touching that Amy, gone, huh? and I assume Texas just shut down their whole internet. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. That's very possible. So Bobby, I hate nice. you so much. I'm so sorry, Riz, but you took no, the No, you're not. You're not Riz, Bobby. that's your own fault. That's your own fault, Riz. Yeah. I hate you so much. Where are we going? <laughs> so, Where are we going? So, so Mike. And thus, the, the rivalry is more. I think you could still do that whole match on 2K15, though. Yeah, you can. You're just going to have to download some people off of Create. Yeah. Oh. All right. Well, Amon's not here, so I guess I'll take his turn. Oh, Please get rid of Steamboat uh, Yeah, yeah, Eamon, Eamon will not be coming back. Yeah, why didn't you get rid of Steamboat Sting? Yeah, please get rid of Steamboat Sting. Why would Sting? I want to get rid of Steamboat and Sting? I was Steamer, also man. going, I was thinking of doing that too, but no, then I got fucking Sin Cara. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, maybe I'll draw a name for the jar mid Carters. Maybe that's oh, only no. fair. No. <laughs> it's a lot harder than you think, Matt. Yeah, oh, no, I don't want any part of it. It's a lot harder than you think. This is a oh, that's you, that's what we should have done. If we wanted to, if, no, that, one, that should be round eight. Like it'll, everybody gets a pick from the mid card lost. Oh jeez, that would just ruin the <laughs> entire then, WrestleMania card. And then one man gets. Oh, oh okay. I, I know what my move is gonna be. Ha, I'm not sleeping on the couch tonight, fellas. I'll tell, tell you what we're gonna do. <laughs> We're going to get rid of Wyatt versus Harper. Yes. And we're going to give the world the match it wants to see. The match it needs. You guys know where I'm going with this. I I have no idea. Rollins versus John Stewart. Rollins versus John Stewart. (laughs) Dean Ambrose versus Seth Rollins. Yep. Uh, Solid. Solid. Okay. So that means it is Sorg's turn. So Rod. Sorg. Serge. Sorry, I had to deal with some stuff. Okay, where are we at? Where are we at here? Um so Sorg, this is move number six. You are um okay. you're clean up here. We, we got a lot of stuff um, going on. Hey, can, can you recap me what's happening at the top of the top of the the, the, the pile here? What what I can't I can't, I I can't just, read that. I just took out Wyatt and Harper and replaced it with Ambrose versus Rollins. Ambrose and Rollins, okay. Uh, earlier the New Day versus Seamus Swagger and Christian was replaced by the Lucha Dragons versus Undertaker and Kane. I'm not touching that one. I'm not touching that <laughs> and, one. And um, <laughs> Hot Wheels added Sami Zayn to the Ziggler Bryan match because right. we need more work, right? And <laughs> nothing, <laughs> happened. Happened. nothing else and happened. Bobby are having <laughs> a lot of balloon fight down here <laughs> for Goldust versus Stardust. Right now, it's Goldust versus Stardust. Goldust versus Stardust. Okay. Yeah. Although Kevin Owens versus the Big Show. Can I? Oh, thank you. Oh, thank yeah. you, Matt. Are you I guys? Like I think I think I'm going to, and this is uh, well within your discretion. I like to push the boundaries. Oh, no. You know it. This is WrestleMania. <laughs> We're all about history here. 
Are you gonna put in Ric Flair or, again? Or just doing Steve <laughs> <Oak> Flair? <laughs> No, I oh, man. I consider strange. I did consider Flair for a moment to add to Steamboat Sting, but I'm not going to re-retire somebody again. <laughs> uh, somebody who that I'm aware of has not had a retirement match, and therefore could technically wrestle, and has wrestled as recently as the late 2000 aughts. Oh Terry Jesus! <laughs> I want to add. Yeah, Terry Funk's never had a retirement match. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna add Dennis Stamp. I want to add. <laughs> <laughs> He's finally booked. <laughs> I want to add to Stardust and Goldust. Oh, oh. 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 wow! Damn it. Sorg. No, Sorg. I know what you're doing. No, don't no. do it, Sorg. Do don't it. do it. Don't do, do it. it. Do it. We don't need sawdust. <laughs> <laughs> we don't need sawdust. Can we write him in as, saw, as sawdust? Dusty uh, Rose. Uh, hey, go. Hey, bring him back the polka dots, baby. Hey, bring uh, him back. Hey, he's riding the ghost of Sweet Sapphire right into WrestleMania. And he's going to settle this with amongst his boys. Basically, the wanna, only person that made wait, a move was Mike and Wheels. I've got to at least stop, <laughs> stop this right here. The last time Dusty Rhodes was in a WWE yeah. ring, I was informed he could not take a bump. The yeah. Big Show punched him in the face and had to <laughs> put him down himself so that Dusty wouldn't have to fall over. Yeah. I don't think we no. can put Dusty Rhodes <laughs> in a match. So. Hey, no. hey, it's, hey. It's, the Iron Sheik was in a battle royal and couldn't get eliminated. Therefore, he won because of his bad Sorg, knees. Sorg, I think we are that to- was at WrestleMania 17. Yeah. That was 14 Our, years ago. Yay or nay on Dusty no. Rhodes? Go. No sawdust. Okay, no. no sawdust for old men. No. Sorg, you're going to have to go back to the drawing board. Oh, what was something it. else? I like stretching Sorg, the limits. Sorg, if you try a stunt like that again, you, Matt's going to pick from the mid-card uh, jar. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Two strikes. On two, stri- uh, two strikes. That's all we got. <laughs> that's a hell of a rule, Mike. We're bringing that back next year. Is yes! It, it's a man lady is going to stretch up a pencil and drop in the jar mid-card. Oh, jeez. Oh, we got Ziggler Bryan. Tearing us apart. Ziggler Bryan. <laughs> Uh, Ziggler, Brian, I'm going to add uh, Axel Mania. Let's make it happen. Nice. Ooh. Let's see if the guy can go. Let's put him against the best two workers out there, and let's see if he can have a well, killer the best three match. workers now. It's a no, four no, way. Zane is in there, too. It's a fatal oh, four-way now. even better. Even <laughs> better. Nice. Good job, Storg. I like it. Axel By Mania way, uh, it's running uh, wild yeah. all over the Mayhem show. Hey, Matt, now you have to take that, that uh, Lego out of your pile. That's right. I do have a, you, you want to see my Axel Mania leg? Axel, Axel Mania was in the jar of mid-course. Axel Mania. Mean, he would get this over this fast. All right. <laughs> if I couldn't have added Stardust and Goldust, you know what I was going to do? What were you going to do, Bobby? I was going to put Curtis Axel versus Zack Ryder versus Adam Rose. <laughs> <laughs> triple threat match. <laughs> That's like half the jar. You, you were just going to uh, usurp the jar. I was going to take the jar apart. <laughs> Sorg, let me recap, and then there. I'll tell everybody what's up next week. All right, what's up? All right, um, recapping. Here's what we got. Um, okay, of course, The Miz versus Damian Mizdow. Uh Dean Ambrose versus Seth Rollins. The Lucha Dragons versus the Brothers of Destruction. Fatal 4-Way. Curtis Axel versus Dolph Ziggler versus Daniel Bryan versus Sami Zayn. Ricky the Dragon Steamboat versus Sting made How it. How did the neck get touched at all? John Cena versus Rowan Reigns versus The match. Rock versus Alex Riley. Charlotte versus Sasha Banks. Char Char. Rusev. Char Char. Rusev <laughs> versus Brock Lesnar. And Gold Dust versus Stardust. You did it, buddy. You made it. Do we I have, think it graduated. I think Rusev Lesnar yeah, graduated. Two yeah. graduations. I graduated two something. Graduations this week. We both did. Thanks to so, uh, me. We're going to go back and see who created what. Bobby, <laughs> I'm quite certain you created Gold Dust versus yeah, I Steiner. Yes, I did. I'm pretty sure I, I created Rusev Lesnar. I thought Eamon created Rusev versus Lesnar. We'll go check. Um, you created Miz Down. Uh, no, no, Sword, Sword, Sword did. created okay. the Miz versus yeah, that's right. Miz Down, yeah. Um, now I told you that this was round seven. Round eight will be the last round. Well, next week will not be round eight. What? Dun, dun, dun. Patreon in the bank round. 
So if you want to play in the Patreon in the bank round, you, become a you must sign up to be a Patreon member for the Wrestling Mayhem Show. And then you will be privy to all the great privileges that come with the privy Patreon in the bank round of Mayhem what? Mania. Why now, does it seem like one of those games yeah, where you have to buy it. extra donuts? To it buy is. <laughs> we are, we are, now, we are I, now supporting the Canadian devil. <laughs> no, no, Mike, Mike, if we're doing this on TK15, are we just going to let oh, it computer on. play or? Yes, that's exactly okay. what I'm doing. Good, because I'd like to see it that way. And I'm, I'm, see. And we're we're, we're going to try to simulate the matches that we create on Mayhem Mania. So all the ones right. we can right. anyway. Yeah, yeah. 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 Things are getting like weird. that Steamboat Sting match. Uh, um, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Uh, when I get, like, later tonight, I'll check on my 360, see if anybody created Steamboat. But I, I know, know you have what. I can't. Just create a wrestler and give him nothing but arm drags, and you're good. So. Yeah. Arm drag. Arm drag. <laughs> and a chop off the top rope. I might be doing Rusev Lesnar soon, so. I can't wait. And it will be put, posted. My cats, my cats just had mayhem mania right in, the, in my room. So, so Matt, are we, Matt, Matt, are we doing a round for not for non Patreon people too, or is it just Patreon? The next week will be the Patreon in the bank round. Then the eighth and final round will follow the week after that, and that will once again once again be an open round with this one. And I'll have a brand new option for a move for you guys, one that you guys have been asking for for a while. So stipulations. Maybe Should Should be fun. Sword? Spoilers. Spoilers. I only I only have to protect LB's match for one more week. <laughs> <laughs> you destroy it. You oh, destroy man. it. I'm having so much fun with By this. By the way, if you are a Patreon subscriber and you want to crush LB's dream. <laughs> Don't do it. You can do it. You can do it. I can't if it's a Patreon subscriber round, I can't take flame for it because then you're technically our boss. So I mean, we have, what, three Patreons? Yes. So yes. you can actually take out the match and just add and and make your own match. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that would ruin that person that and put one of those four in that match. Like, if you want to see it. Bad News Barrett on this card... <laughs> you can. Barrett Riley? What? No. Oh. God. Oh, please Bear Wiley. Ah, pre-show match. Pre-pre-show match. <laughs> oh, <Bear Wiley. laughs> Popcorn that's vendor. A pre and that's an NXT pre-show match. That's a, I'm that, afraid that, I've got some that's bad a, That's news. a ring in the parking lot match. Um, anyways. <laughs> yes. Wow. Sorry, sorry. They had that match at Access Sword. <laughs> yes, they did. Everybody's going to want to go to Access and just watch the wrestling now, to be honest. Mm. They, they bring the NXT guys in there for, to do them all again. Yeah, yeah. seriously. Um, you know, like, yeah. fine. They're just going to hire a bunch of indie guys to do it because the, the NXT people are too popular. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so, I, I really wish. I hope they just like broadcast an NXT show from Fan Access. I, I just this just needs to happen. That anyways, would be cool. Anyways, anyways, guys, let's learn. What did you learn from wrestling this week, guys? Matt, and Mike. Oh, what did I learn? I learned that uh, my moment of zen is Seth Rollins getting kicked in the dick. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, uh, what about you, Riz? No, Mike or Matt. What? What? Matt. Okay. Ah, ah. Right. Sorg, Sorg, I learned what that uh, Ring, Ring of Honor has officially squashed TNA as the number two. Um, oh, man. United States based wrestling promotion. I can't be bothered to pick up my remote control on a Friday night, but I spent most of my Sunday just seeking out that Ring of Honor pay per view just like I catch a few glimpses of it. And I like what I saw. So good job, Ring of Honor, bringing some heavy star power to pay per view. All right. What about you, Riz? So you're, you're coming to me this time? Yes. <laughs> All right. I learned that Stephanie McMahon. Is 100 degrees with a leather leather jacket on because she is a super hot boy. What the fuck? What? Super hot. I got what you said, Riz. Con it's a context. Hot fire. Context. Super hot fire. Yeah, that's not context. What? what? 
Riz, Riz, you don't have to explain it to the white boys. Wait, I understand. <laughs> what? Wait, what? What? Yeah, I don't. I don't think. <laughs> uh, I, I don't think Wheels and Riz are talking about the same. Thing. I don't. I don't know what's happening. Oh, 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 Wheels, what what did you learn, please? <laughs> okay, I learned that uh, honestly, John Cena, you're not the WWE. They can live without you. The WWE listens to its fans. So are you saying he's not the wind beneath their ring? <laughs> yes, oh. Mike. Yes. No. What about you, what? Bobby? That was a segment. I'm wrong. What about you, Bobby? I learned that um, some hallways are very dangerous mm-hmm. when left unattended. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Did I get everybody? Is that everybody nope. that's left? Matt. Matt? Matt. Matthew. Matt went. No, I learned that ROH has got some good stuff. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. about ROH. Um, I, cool. I learned that the best Raws happen when I'm not available to watch them. Holy crap. Yeah, really? Oh, right. Wow. I, wow. I also Zork? learned that this week's Zork. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but I, I'm learning a lot by watching the old uh, WrestleManias. Um, I really think that whole 87 and 91 era was the most interesting, most colorful character, but not too goofy, cartoony. Um, or maybe it's just because that's the era I grew up around. Um, but just watching these, like, uh, I'm having so much fun watching, especially like WrestleMania 5 through 7 currently. Um, and just, just you know, it, it, it feels like I'm watching, like, top to bottom, good match, good match, good match, you know, for the most part, until Dino Bravo comes out. Um, <laughs> sorry, Canada. Uh, but no, but generally, and, and just blown sorry, away. French Canada. Blown away. I'm watching WrestleMania 6, and That's I talked Canada. about this on the 30 Days of WrestleMania. You can go check it out on the site and the YouTube channel uh, for Wrestling Mayhem Show. Um, there were four tag team segments. I'm talking about three tag team matches and the Bushwhackers getting involved with the Rhythm and Blues uh, uh, concert, I guess. Uh, could you, and I asked this question on, on, on the thing today, um, uh, could you name eight tag teams that you could have a reasonable set of matches with? Yeah. Now. Yeah. Really? Well, yeah, okay, I I, not everybody, but, but Mike thinks he can do it. Who would you name? Uh, well, you have the New Day. Um, actually, they broke a lot of tag teams up recently, so mm-hmm. yeah. Primetime so players are back together. Primetime players, you have the Matadors, you have the Usos, you have Kid and Cesaro, you have the Ascension. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, but I think it, that's six. It, 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 so you have all those teams, and this Who's is a day and age where we had two tag team belts, and you were lucky if one of them got on the pre-show. Mm-hmm. Yet we had one set of belts, and we had four segments involving tag teams. But we also had a lot shorter matches in all those WrestleManias. A lot shorter matches. Really? Mm-hmm. And plus, you have to remember, back when they were touring, they would have an A squad and a B squad. We have an A squad and a B squad now. Yeah, but not like a distinctive. Like a lot of the guys go to the same shows. Like they had literal separate squads. Like so they had to fill it out with a lot of tag team matches. And plus most of the tag teams back then couldn't talk. They had managers. That's true too. That's true too. Oh, a lot of Mr. Mike skills are a lot more important now and you can it you really have to be a singles guy to emphasize Mike skills. Oh, and you have Big Show and Kane. That's a tag team. And oh, there's another one too, and I can't think of it. But I mean, that's seven tag teams right there. That's true. That's true. Would you be bored if we had like three tag teams? Matches? Sword. Do you remember that SmackDown tag team turmoil? That's yes, true. We'd be, yes, we'd be bored. <laughs> <laughs> no, we could. Yeah, oh, we would. Oh no, I was gonna say Slater Gator, but they're not around anymore. Yeah, so. but we got primetime players. So. Yeah. All right. On that note, I think we got everybody. I don't see anything popping up in the chat room, so. Thank you for joining us. Wrestling Mayhem Show was tons of fun, as usual. And uh, you can also contact us here. 412-206-WMS0 is the hotline or Good Times. Good Times! Good Times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. You can drop us a, or drop over to WrestlingMayhemShow.com to check out all the links for subscribing and all the so many things. Like the front page is everything we did in the last week. It's 
crazy right now. And you guys are really holding together and bringing up a lot of new stuff. I love it. I love everything <laughs> we're doing. We got so much mayhem going on. And it's Sorg, become... uh, this weekend is the finale of Total Diva season three. No. So you better believe that Jen Crones and I are going to have a lot to talk about. Sweet. You better have a super, super fun fact about her dating life with Matt. Yo, we try to have that every week. Hi, Matt. <laughs> oh, we'll be revealed. <laughs> Secrets will be out there. Uh, thank you, Mike I, Allen. I Ab- stop listening to it because I don't want to know anymore. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's the reason I listen to it, even if I don't watch the show. Uh, thanks, Mike Allen. Uh, Mike Allen PR on the Twitters for uh, show notes and tweets all night long, helping us out there. And, uh, of course, follow us at Mayhem Show, Wrestling Mayhem Show on Facebook, the Facebook group especially, and, of course, Google+. Plus. And uh, subscribe. I didn't say that already. Thank you, everybody. At Mad Mike 4 Day 3 at Hot Wheels RWA. Also, check out RWALive.com. At Mainstream Matt with one team. Also, MainstreamMatt.blogspot.com. And claim the follow-up to what we did on the Mayhem Media. Uh, at Mad Mike 4 Day 3 He also joins us on the Rambling Movie Minute. Also, on SorgatronMedia.com. Uh, at The Eras, a writer along with Bobby FJ Town over at InsertCoinToBegin.com. So much video game goodness going on over there. I'm at Sorgatron, Sorgatron.com, SorgatronMedia.com. Lots of things. Basic Sorgonomics check it out and we'll see you guys next time mayhem out this show is a member of the sorgatron media podcast network find out more at sorgatronmedia.com